So it's been about two weeks since we've been in, but our series that we started on is Grownish. It's talking about growing up and maturing in the things of God, spiritual maturity. So what I want to do today is not move on to the next message, but take us back to the first to make sure that we all are on the same page as far as how important growing up spiritually is. You ready to take this journey with me? I said, are you ready to take this journey with me? All right, let's pray. Father God, I thank you for these, your precious sheep. I thank you that revelation knowledge flows freely, uninterrupted, and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. Think through my mind, speak through my vocal cords. None of me, all of you. I declare every heart anointed to receive and every ear anointed to hear. In Jesus' name I pray. All that agree said. So I got the three chairs out here. Uh, did you guys enjoy after hours? Make some noise for them. Let's go ahead and bring them back out because they're going to help me with my message today. That's cool. Y'all mind if they kick it with us today? Y'all do mind? Y'all want me to leave? Oh, no, you want me to say? Okay, okay, cool, cool. Come on out after hours. Let's get you guys up here. So when I say spiritual maturity, what's the first thing that comes to you guys' head? I seen you raise your hand, baby. What you got? Having a good relationship with the Lord? Okay, who else? Huh? Anybody else? Controlling your emotions. Okay. Anybody else? Great. Like that shirt, boy. Representing Christ through your actions. Major key. Major key. Anybody else? Say that one more time. Using the word in your life. So, y'all know how we do. So, Right here, we have spirit. Right here, we have soul. And right here, we have what? Body. You're going to be the body today. All right? So we got body right here. The spirit part of you is the part of you that once you accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, the spirit part of you became sealed, incorrupted, and just like God. Everybody get that? Everybody say, just like God. Each and every one of you are tripart being. You are a spirit, you possess a soul, and you live in a physical body. And if you've accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, the spirit part of you is just like, there you go. Now here's the interesting part of you. Good old emotions. You know, I was having a conversation with a young person the other day, and I said, you know, everybody wants motion. Am I wrong? Everybody want motion. What you got going on? What's happening with you? What's going on with your life? Uh, you know, how's your GPA? Uh, uh, how's your social life? How many followers you got on Instagram? How many views you get? You know, do you have motion? Do you have traction? But the problem comes in when you add the E to the motion that you're looking for. You did? So your emotions reside in your soul. A lot of times people like to interchange spirit I mean, spirit and soul as if they're the same. They are not. This part of you is sealed and just like God. This part of you is where your thinker is, your emotions. It's where you're angry. It's where you're happy. It's where you're sad. And then you have the part that most people pay the most uh, attention to. This is the part that, where they put it on. You know what I'm talking about? It, it, let, let's, let's check out Mr. Avery here. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, he has the bezeled out. Uh, uh, necklace. He has the bezeled out um, um, wrist uh, 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 bracelet. He has the off the chain tattoos. He's got the Jordan ones on with the black jeans. Uh, uh, what's my man name when he be doing the thing? Yo, 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 yo. I see your glasses. I see your glasses. I'm over your glasses. Christmas food. Uh, I don't know. 50 bucks. 50 bucks. Okay, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see your hat. I see your hat. How much for the hat? How much for the hat? Okay, I see your shirt. I see your shirt. I see your shirt. How much for the shirt? Uh, Eighty bucks! Oh my God! Oh my God! Okay, okay. I see the shoes. I see the shoes. How much for the shoes? Two twenty because I got big feet. Two twenty because I got big feet. We put it on. But what I'm trying to get you guys to understand: How many of you have ever been frustrated? Raise your hand. Ever been afraid? Raise your hand. Ever been enraged? Raise your hand. Watch this. How many of you have ever been hurt? All of that takes place here. 
I'm hurt, I'm confused, I'm lonely, I'm angry. I show up for everybody, but nobody ever shows up for me. I'm always out here doing, the, doing my best for everybody. I'm a best friend to everybody, but nobody ever seems to be able to figure out how to be a best friend to me. All of that takes place here in the, in the motions. Not just the motions, though, but the what? Emotions. Back in the day, they had this group. I forgot who it was. I think it was H-Town. Emotions make you cry sometimes, make you fall in. You can be in love with your emotions. You can uh, be angry with your emotions. You can be uh, suicidal with your emotions. It's a very complicated part of you, which is why the Bible says be transformed by the renewing of your what? So when I say mind, you say soul. Mind, 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 soul, soul, soul. Hey, y'all need to get in the studio. We're talking about spiritual maturity, which literally means maturity as a result of your union with Christ. I want to read this scripture. It's Hebrews 5, 11 through 14. I'm going to read the easy read version. It says, you have had enough time that by now you should be teachers, but you need someone to teach you again the first lessons of God's teaching. You still need the teaching that is like milk. You are not ready for solid food, but solid food is for people who have grown up. From their experience, they have learned to see the difference between good and evil. Anyone who lives on milk is still a baby and is not able to understand much about living right. So, when it's talking about the baby, it would be an injustice if this part of you, when you accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior today, right, became just like Christ, right? This part of you, 10 years later, is 10 years older than the day that you accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Same with this. So what you have here is a 20-year-old body, 20-year-old emotions, and a one-day-old spirit. You follow? Clap one time if you follow. That's a very dangerous thing because everything that happens here springs out of what happens here. That's how God created life to be. Are, are, you, are, you, are you getting this? So are you on milk or are you ready for meat? Well, Pastor Ant, what, what, what's milk? Father Abraham had many sons. And many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. Come on, we could do that all day. But how is that going to help you when your boyfriend cheats on you? How is that going to help you when your dad walks out of your life? Father Abra Abraham had many sons. Well, I guess Abraham going to be my daughter now when I got... No, that's not how that works. Or when we give you milk or we say, you know, um, um, you know, you got to bring all of your tithes into the storehouse. And if you don't, you're robbing God. Milk. But then we come and we give you meat and we say, hey, don't be pressured to give. Okay? You give based off of your relationship with the one you say you love. Meat. They're not ready for that. You know, John Avery, I was thinking, when I was younger, I was taught, and I think I've shared this before, don't get caught having sex and the rapture come. Because if you do, you're going to hell. The rapture come, everybody's going to be taken up into the sky. Right? So me and my friends practice how to repent quickly. Repent. I pin. I pin. Trying to do it in twinkling of an eye. I, I pin. I pin. I pin. That was stupid. That was milk. And then we bring to you people don't go to hell for sin. They go to hell for rejecting Jesus. Jesus is the author and the finisher of your faith. He will finish the work that he started in you. Trust him. Me. No one wants to hear that. It was so easy for me to rock with 
these rules and regulations. But it was hard for me to receive this freedom of grace that just involves you surrendering and submitting to Jesus. And it's like, Lord, I'm broken. I'm nothing without you, but with you, we can do all things through you who strengthen. You strengthen me, Lord, and I trust you. I rely on you. I depend on you for everything. I, I depend on you to show me how to be a good son to my, to my parents or a good daughter to my parents. I, I depend on you to show me how to be a good friend. I depend on you, Lord God, for my, my future. And, and I'm, I'm always mindful of my future, Lord, because I don't know what's on the other side of this corner. And, and I'm, I'm one of those control freaks. So, you know, usually when I know what's going on, I feel better. But when I don't know what's going on, I get this, this fear or this anxiety that comes up. I start sweating. I start breathing real heavy. And, and, and it's like I have heart palpitations and all of these things. But it's like with you, Lord, I trust you because you have a bird's eye view of things that I can't see. You can see the things that are around the corner. You can see the things that are five years ahead of me. So when I'm going through this trial and tribulation, whether it be me and my parents arguing, whether it be my parents getting divorced, whether it be um, my, fa my finances and different things like this, watch this. I remember when I was younger, my mom had got a new job and we moved to uh, Riverdale to a place called Garden Walk, Garden Walk Boulevard. Y'all familiar? Well, back then, Garden Walk was very nice. And if you lived over there, you know, you had a little paper, right? We lived over there for about six months, maybe a year. And I remember getting off the bus one time, and you know, in Georgia, when you get evicted, what do they do? Some of you may know, that's good, you got good parents. So if you've ever driven down the street and you've seen furniture just sitting on the side of the road, or if you live in an apartment complex and you come home and you just see uh, furniture and people's belongings on the side of the road. That's what we call, boys and girls, an eviction. So I was pulling up in my school bus, was riding a school bus. I had to be about 12, 13 years old, maybe 11, right? And we pull up and all of my stuff is right there in front of the complex. And I saw men from the church trying to help pick the stuff up. My mother was out there, she was crying. And I didn't even know we was in trouble because parents try to do their best to do what? Shield you from things that you don't need to know about. And they just try to figure it out, try to figure it out. It's like Men in Black. Uh, if you watch that movie, he said, the world is always in trouble. You just never know it because we handle it. Right? Same thing with God. But anyway, I came home and I saw my stuff. And once I, re I looked, and you know how it take you a minute? You'd be like... And I looked, and once it hit me that it was my stuff, it was like instant anxiety. So as a kid, what I did was I went into self-preservation mode. Heck no, somebody got kicked out their place. I knew it was mine, but I wanted to push the blame and the shame that I was feeling onto anywhere else but here. I can't be embarrassed like this. And one of the... <laughs> I had this leather eight ball jacket that was given to me. And one of the dudes that was on the bus with me, eh, that's your jacket. I was like, huh? That ain't my jacket now, somebody else, no, no, no. Uh, and that's your Nintendo. Deco your mama, heck no, eh, God. Man, I didn't know what to do. I was a kid, I was embarrassed. I was crying and I think I ended up getting into a fight. Because I'm like, don't disrespect me, don't disrespect me, you know. I was, I was upset. But the point that I'm making is, we got to get to a point where we understand this system. Because this system represents you. Man is a spirit, you possess a soul, and you live in a physical body. Unfortunately, we pay more attention to this part of us than we do this part of us. This part of you, if it's, uh, turn your seat his way. This part of you, if it's turned towards the body, is going to reflect the thing that the body enjoys. So the body can see, right? So it enjoys what it what? Sees. The body can feel, right? So it enjoys what it what? Feels. It can Smell. 
It has senses, right? But everything I just described can be put into one word that you may have heard but never really understood. That word is called carnal. Everybody say carnal. Carnal literally means of the five senses. What you hear, feel, touch, smell, right? So if the soul is, look at the soul as a mirror. It's going to reflect whatever it's pointed to. Again, which is why the Bible says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How many of you can think to be transformed by renewing your mind in the word of God in the midst of getting evicted? Nobody? In the midst of being told no, well, you can't go to a party that you really want to go to. All your friends are going to be there. You already told your friends you was going to be there, but, you know, you came home. Mom, Dukes, dad said no. What are you going to do when your heart is broken? When your emotions are all over the place? Your emotions is already in Friday and it's just Monday. You understand what I'm saying? And it gets to the point where even the people that rock with you, your inner circle, you get around them, and it's not that they've done anything wrong, but usually when you're hurt, hurt people do what? Hurt people hurt people. But the other part of that is they usually don't just hurt people. They usually hurt the people that had nothing to do with the initial injury that happened to them. Remember that. You guys got to get to a place where you retain this information you meditate on this information, you get it down into your heart so that when the opposition comes your way, you're prepared. Service should not just be, I came, he spoke, um, I think he said this, I think he said that. No, you should be writing, this thing, writing these things down, meditate on them, get them down into your heart so that you can begin to start the process of what? Growing. Spiritually. You see, the Bible talks about man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. I'm not telling you just my words. These aren't my words. I may sprinkle some of my experiences into it, but I'm teaching you the word of God. This is how your spirit grows. Are you hearing me? This is how your spirit grows. I ain't got no problem with you going up and listening to different artists. You know, oh man, I listen to NBA Youngboy. What is NBA Youngboy about? What is the heart behind his music? He's a hurt individual. So his music represents the struggle and it represents what? Hurt. He's a hurt kid, right? I don't have a problem with you listening to that, but if your spirit is immature and if your soul is immature, it means your body, even though it's 18, 19, 17, 16 years old, it has the feeling of maturity, but there's still a void there because this part ain't caught up and that part ain't caught up. Welcome to childhood. Man, it's just so aggravating here. They get on my nerves. I can't do nothing. I got to ask if I can eat this. I got to ask if I could go here. I can't wait to be grown. I'm 17. I should be able to do what I want to do. Your parents are saying no because when opposition comes your way, it's not that they don't see the maturity in your age. They see the immaturity in your soul, and they see the immaturity definitely here. It's time to grow up. Are you hearing me? The most important reason for spiritual maturity is for our lives to reflect the nature of Jesus Christ. Matthew 4, 3 and 4 says, Man shall not live by bread alone. Yeah, we got food for y'all today, and it's going to make you full. But the day you begin to realize that once you begin to eat this word and your spirit start to eat, oh, your swag start hitting different. Blessings start coming your way like never before because you're perfectly aligned. And here's the thing about it. Uh, the Bible talks about how a day in heaven is like a thousand years on earth. The spirit don't grow on the pace of the body. It's not going to take forever for you to mature spiritually. All it takes is a decision. It takes a decision for you to go, I need to start putting the word in me. And what happens is, thank you, Holy Spirit. 
When you accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, right here, the spirit part of you. Everybody say spirit. The spirit, the spirit part of you was given a gift. Do you know what that gift is? Who knows? Somebody say it. Huh? That's one of them. But it's a specific gift that comes as a result. Discernment comes as a result of the gift that was given to you. There you go. Say it again. Say it louder so they can hear you. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the gift. Right? Right? You got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. He's in you. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The Holy Spirit is always with you. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care what you're smoking. I don't care what you're drinking. I don't care what you're lying about. I don't care about how you're flexing and doing all this other stuff. The Holy Spirit is still there, and when God sees you, he sees his son because you accepted him as your Lord and personal Savior, but you thought that was just it. No, it's not it. You have to choose to walk with him. You have to choose to submit to his way, to his will. But what if I don't? That means you've accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And while you could be experiencing uh, the better things in life, you're going through this world experiencing, you're feeling every bump, kind of like a car with no shocks. If you got bad shocks on your car, you're going to not only hear the bump, but you're going to feel it. How many drivers I got in here? How many of you ever ran over a pothole? And you'd be like, ooh, you feel it in your body. Ooh, that may have messed me up. Oh, man, you got that face like, yeah, it just happened. It happened a couple times. Oh, man, uh, I hope it's, everything's okay. But anyway, it's like you feel all the bumps. You feel all the hits. And we weren't created for that. Now, the Bible does say in this world you will have trials and tribulations. But then he says, be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. It's not about you. It's about he that worketh in you. Does that make sense? It's not about you. Who's it about? He that worketh in you. Are you getting it? Clap one time if that makes sense. All right. How do I mature spiritually? Pastor Ann, I hear what I need to do, but how do I do it? I'm glad you asked. Number one, intimacy. Oh, man. What a topic, especially on a, you know, with Valentine's Day coming up. When I say intimacy, what do you, what do you think? Quality time. Okay. What else? When I say intimacy, what are you thinking? Anybody? Who knows what intimacy means? Raise your hand if you know what intimacy means. Okay, okay. That means you don't. Intimacy. Uh, I can show you better than I can tell you. Come here, babe. She knew that was coming. June 25th, 1983, you were born. Yes. To Wayne and Catherine Jones. Mm -hmm. Your favorite color is blue and sometimes orange. So. Blue, baby blue to be exact, it would be more of your first choice than the orange, correct? Cobalt blue, okay, I was a little off. Um, you met the love of your life at 11 years old. He was playing the drums in the chapel of World Changes Church International. Wasn't he? He was a dapper, handsome young man that didn't see you, but you saw him, correct? Is it safe to say that? And it was like love at first sight, even though I hadn't saw you yet, there it was. That's intimacy. It's a knowing. I know her. I don't know of her. I know her. How many of you can do the same thing about Jesus? What was Jesus' brother's name? What was Jesus born? What was his first miracle? You see where I'm going with this? Intimacy. How deep is your love? Fortunately, we serve a God where it's not about how deep our love is for him. It's about us understanding how deep his love is for us. You understand what I'm saying? You could never love God to the capacity that he loves you. You don't have the capacity to do that. 
intimacy is, has nothing to do with, uh, I don't want to say has nothing to do with like sexual things and different things like that, but a lot of times people like to limit it to just that. No, it's a love that, if there was a threat in this building right now, right, even though we have security, that threat would have to see me. And I wouldn't be on this pulpit protecting you all from that threat. I would have to go and be outside of my character and be outside of different things. I'm willing to do that for you because what? I love you. That's my job. I'm gonna put my life on the line for each and every one of you. Pastor Ant, you don't even know my name. No, but I know God loves you. And I know that you're here. And if you've come in here, that means that I have a responsibility to protect, to teach, and to build you up. Does that make sense? That's intimacy. However, that intimacy that I have on that one level isn't something that can be to compare to the intimacy that I may have with my, born, my natural born children. Does that make sense? Remember when I went to the, uh, we were talking about relationships and I was showing you guys the three different levels of relationship. Remember that? What was it? You have the inner court, the outer court, and what's the main one? Holies of holies. Holies of holies should only consist of about two, maybe three people. These people know you're good, they know you're bad, they know you're ugly, and they don't judge you about it. They build you up when you're down, and the vice versa. When they're down, you do the, it's an accountability circle. And then you have inner court outside of that. Not as intimate. You understand what I'm saying? It's more of a, you know, oh yeah, I see you, I go to class, I got first period with you. Um, every day, um, you know, we work on um, uh, school projects together, you know, um, I may sit with you at the lunch table, but yeah, you wouldn't spend the night at my house. You know what I'm saying? Not unless, you know, we was going like a field trip or we play on the same basketball team and we got to go for a far away game or AAU or something like that. You, know, you, you, you understand what I'm saying? But it's like, thinking about it, you got holies of holies in the court, and then you got the outer court people. These are people that you see. Oh, what's up, Bubba? Good, good to see you. All right. Yeah. Oh, what's going on? Man, how you doing, man? Good to see you. What? Uh, how, how things been going? You ask them how things been going, but if they were to start to tell you, you really, I was just being nice. I, I really, I was, that was just like, hey, maybe I need to change up how I say, hey, I shouldn't say how you doing. Man, what's going on, man? You good? Actually, oh, man, you're out of court. Oh, man. You know what I'm saying? And you shouldn't do that, but I'm just trying to give you a realistic view of how holies of holies, in a court and out of court work. You understand what I'm saying? Intimacy is the holies of holies part. Everybody shouldn't have access to you. I hope you wrote that down. Everybody should not have access to you. Because a lot of times, who you allow in your proximity, who knows what proximity means? Huh? In your area, the people that you allow into your area on a consistent basis, you show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Make sense? Intimacy. People that you allow access to. People that you're vulnerable to. People where you ain't got to put it on. You know what I'm saying? This is disgusting. But, you know, I'm not just going to walk around you guys and fart. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. I'll do it around Riley. That's my baby. She's in my holies of holies. You dig what I'm saying? It's a decorum. It's a, it's a, eh. everybody shouldn't have access to you. Riley knows me on a whole other level. My kids, my wife, they know me on a whole other level, right? As it should be. But be mindful of who you allow access to you. So basically that's where intimacy, it's, it's the people, it's come into me and see who I am without being judged, without being ridiculed, without being, uh, without when me and you get into it, you use it against me like it's a court of law, right? People that you can share things with and they not use them against you, that's intimacy. Clap your hands if you understand what intimacy means. How do, I, how do we mature spiritually? Intimacy, build a life of prayer and worship. Intimacy is what prayer and worship bring into your relationship with Jesus. I'm going to say that again. Intimacy is what prayer and worship 
bring into your relationship with Jesus. I remember, uh, well, shoot. I do this often. It's more so um, when I'm in my office here at the church or when I'm home alone and I'm praying and then I've added making sure that I'm at every Saturday corporate prayer so that I could do what I do privately, corporately, because it's just, for me, I love it. I, I just love it. If you don't know, every Saturday at World Changes at 10 a.m., we're across the street in the chapel and we have corporate prayer. That's hundreds of people just coming together and we're all praying. Nobody's praying in English, everybody's praying in their heavenly language and it's just so powerful. The presence of God is just so thick. But it's thick when I'm at home as well and I'm doing it by myself, right? But it builds intimacy. How do I build intimacy with my wife? Well, how did I build intimacy with her when um, we were dating, when we were younger? We spent hours on the phone right? We spent hours on the phone talking, laughing, joking around with each other, you know, shooting the breeze. We couldn't even, sometimes we weren't even talking about nothing. Back then, we didn't have FaceTime. Now, y'all FaceTime and y'all be on the phone with the dude or the girl all night. Me and Constance would be on the phone. <laughs> the, not, the, not the cell phone, but the regular house phone. And we would just be up there, and she's a snorer, and I would... Amen. Anyway, that's too much information. Too much information. But that's intimacy. That's how you build it. Spending time with. Going out on dates. Going out on dates with her could be uh, parallel with worshiping God. Okay? Going out on dates, enjoying ourselves. And get to a point where you can enjoy your relationship with Jesus. Where it's not just you talking, but you hear him talking back to you. Amen? So intimacy. Number two, James 1, 22 and 25, it talks about reading the Bible and applying it to our everyday lives. How do I grow up uh, uh, spiritually? How do I mature? Start reading your word. Why, do I, why is it important that I read these stories? It's not just reading stories. It's when the school is telling you that your GPA is too low, you're missing about two or three credits as a senior, and then you're getting ready to, not, to graduate. Instead of the first thing coming out your mouth being what you see or what you heard, the Bible says, call those things to be not as though they were. So if you don't read the word, you don't know to uh, counter that you're not going to graduate uh, with, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Does that make sense? You see, everything in this world is voice activated. And the enemy in the world's job is to get you to say what you see. Which is why when you're frustrated, man, man, go ahead on, man, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, man, man, whatever. Or you just don't say nothing. You go in your room, you close the door, you cry, and you try to pin it all in, and you put on fake smiles and you walk around, and then three years later you got a depression problem. Why are you walking around depressed? Because you didn't deal with that issue adequately. You swept it under the rug. So we tell you, well, 1 Peter 5 and 7 says, cast all of your cares, your worries, your anxieties on him, for he cares for you. Why did he tell us that? Because you don't have the capacity to be able to do with those things. Don't be self-centered, because if you're self-centered, you put yourself in the middle, and you set yourself up to do what? Take all the hits. Right? No. Cast your care on me. What happens is, we cast our cares on God with strings attached. So when we cast our cares on him, right? Here, Lord, I'm giving this to you. Now I'm going to walk away. And then something comes up to agitate that original issue. And all of a sudden, give it back, Lord. This is my issue. And we take that issue and we start to walk around with it and we start to nurture it. And we nurse that issue. We, we rehearse that issue, right? And then before you know it, man, this issue that we've been trying to get away, give away, we're supposed to give it back to God. Lord, take this thing from me. We begin raising it like it's one of our own children. All of a sudden, anger is not just something that happens to you or something that, uh, emotion that you have. It begins to define you. Your issues begin to define you when you don't have God in your life or you don't add God into the equation. Your spirit is a baby. Your soul is a baby. But you're 17 and you're trying to figure out, I don't understand why 
I'm explaining to you why. It's because you're a baby. It's time to grow up. So intimacy. Reading the word. Hey, that's the second time. Just did that baby dirty. <laughs> Out bad. Intimacy. Reading the Bible. Applying it to your everyday lives. Number three. We congregate with a spirit-filled church family or community so we can help each other. You going up to somebody, I got this, uh, I got a circle, right? I can't talk to everybody in my circle about the things of God because they won't understand it like I do. But then I have other people that I can go to and I can talk to about certain things like that. But people that I grew up with and just are still my friends and different things like that, it's like, I hear you. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. But yeah, man, I'm about to go ahead and they go right back to what they was doing before, right? But there's certain people I can talk to about, bro, man, I, I'm feeling some type of way, man. I need you to pray for me. And they got, man, I got you, man. I'm going to build you up, man. Uh, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You know, you know they just... You got to have that circle of people around you, around like-minded people. Why? Because you need somebody to help you with this thing. But I got the Holy Spirit. Yeah, you do. But as you're maturing, you're going to need help with this thing. You're going to need to be surrounding yourself around people who are on the same things that you want. Or surround yourself. I used to tell my boys all the time, if you're trying to be a great basketball player, you got to hang around the pros. You don't hang around people who still play like you do. What's that going to do? All three of y'all suck. The whole team mediocre. No, I want to hang around folks that can yoke that thing when they go. Go up in the paint and yang, yang, yang. You, know, you, know, you, you understand? Somebody who know how to play quick, powerful, and with authority and just a dog. That's what I want to hang around. But if you are a believer and you're hanging around weak Christians who love the idea of a Savior but don't want to truly embrace him, you'll be just like him. Watch your circle. Make sense? Clap one time if that makes sense. Good clap, good clap, good clap. What does maturity look like? John 13, 34, New Living Translation. If y'all can put that up on the screen for me. John 13, 34, New Living Translation. And it's all about love. So now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Simon Peter asked, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus replied, you can't go with me now, but you will follow me later. No, I just said go to 34. Y'all want to read the rest of it? Yeah, go back to 34. So now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Uh, it's going to be hard to say this. Well, not hard for me. It's going to be a hard pill to swallow, though. Uh, let me see. How do I want to word this? It looks like the person, it looks like the person swallowing their pride and choosing to move like Jesus moves in spite of how you feel or in spite of what the other person did. You got that? It looks like the person swallowing their pride. What is pride? Good job. Trusting, relying, and depending on self. What is humility, which is opposite of pride? Trusting, relying, and depending on God. That's pride, that's humility. With pride, God resisted the proud. Not because he don't like you, he loves you. He sent the son to die for you. Are you kidding me? But just like electricity can't flow through wood, God's love and God's power can't flow through you trusting you. You got to trust him. Does that make sense? Clap one time if that makes sense. 
I need you guys to get this because one of the biggest challenges I've had as an adult man, as a pastor even, it's like, Lord, created me a clean heart. I say out my mouth I've forgiven this thing, but when this thing comes up around me, I still feel negative attachments to it. I still feel like, like I, I've forgiven just with my lips. Lord, help me. Created me a clean heart so that I can move like I need to move and I can go to other levels in ministry and I can go to other levels in my anointing and I can go to other levels when it pertains to these, these students, Lord. Created me a clean heart. The fact that you can even own up to that is called maturity. You see, you got people that come out here and they, man, I ain't got no issues with nobody. I'm good. I'm good. But then the person comes around and you have an opportunity to do the right thing and you don't do the right thing because there's still a little bit of art there. There's still a little bit of malice there. There's still a little bit of a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You, you, you understand what I'm saying? And what I'm telling you is that I don't care what the situation is. You have to stand in a position of forgiveness with these people. You have to. It's not for their sake. Whose sake is it for? Your sake. Unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting for the other person to die. You hear me? I said unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting for the other person to die. I need you guys to get to a place in your life where you're willing to die to yourself. What does that mean, Pastor Ant? Because are you saying, what, what are you, just tell me what you're saying. I'm saying that there's desires that you have that have nothing to do with God's plans for your life. Are you willing to die to your plan so that you can walk out his plan? Being mindful that he knows the hairs on your head. And the Bible says that he wants for you more than you can think or imagine. Can you imagine that? Your imagination is very deep. You can imagine some pretty big things. But the things that you imagine can only reflect what you've been taught or what you've been exposed to. God. Whew. Whew. God is so good. So sovereign. That his imagination, you don't even have the capacity to understand. But if you just simply step back and say, not my will, but your will be done in every area of my life, Lord. When it comes to who I choose to allow in my holies of holies, when it comes to who I choose uh, to allow into my inner circle, when it comes to what school I want to go to, when it comes to what career path I want to go to, but not just those big things, because everything big is comprised of something small. Out back there, this banner looks like a pretty picture. But when you get up on it, I can see the details of the material. Oh man, it looks like this was like sewn in and put together. And, and as you get close up on it, you can see the, the, the imperfections in it. And, and it. and it looks good from afar, and it looks good up close. But when you really start looking at it and really start dissecting it, it's made up of small particles, just like your TV. Your, your, your TV is made up of millions and sometimes, depending on how big your TV is, billions of pixels that come together and form what? A picture. So not just the big things like your, 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 your uh, GPA and stuff like that, but you broke that girl's heart. You broke that girl's heart because another girl broke your heart. You need to fix that because the one who heart you just broke, what you don't know is that's my child too. It's really your sister in the Lord. And you have no idea the type of hell this girl has been going through. Molested by her uncle always 
um, being preyed on by older men and she was kept to herself and then all of a sudden at 16, 17, 18 years old her body started craving certain things. Her body started developing in certain areas and it attracted more attention. But what the young man who's also a believer, and this is just an example, what the young man who's also a believer doesn't know is all of the hell that that little girl went through. He doesn't know that the parents that she lived with isn't her real biological parents. He doesn't know that they adopted her at seven years old. And by the time she was seven years old, she had went through all types of hell, including molestation. So by the time she finally came into a blessed home, she finally feel like, God, you're real. But she has all of that stuff that she dealt with, all of that trauma that she dealt with prior to getting into that home. And this cute, good-looking young man from World Changes, Creflo's Church, came up in there and started off nice and started off lovely. But all of a sudden, it led down a path where you put the carriage before the horse. The world calls it low-hanging fruit. When you pick a fruit or you pick an apple off a tree before it's ripe, when you bite into it, it gives you a bitter experience. Why? Because it's not its time. But you're not being mindful of time in the heat of the moment. Maturity will have you being mindful of time in the heat of the moment. But immaturity, it's like, man, shoot, all my past, present, and future sins have already been forgiven for real on God. By for real, by on my mama. On my mama. It's like, you don't even talk like that. You're a praise and worship leader. What are you doing? You know, you don't even talk like that. You know, you're on a production team. You don't even talk like that, bro. What are you, come on, bro. What are you doing? What are you, what are you, what are you doing? But on my mama, man, on my mama, you fine. On my mama, you fine. On my, on my mama, you fine. You know, you're doing all this other stuff. You guys get together. You have sex. Oh, my goodness. So now she feels like the only way I can be accepted is by giving people access to me. These are the small things that happen on a day-to-day -day basis. Ladies. When you go to school, how many times do people try to holler at you? Huh? How many times have you heard the same game given to you by different dudes over and over and over and over and over again? Hey, little mama. Say, little mama. What's going on with you? I'm sorry. I got a boyfriend. That's your problem. I'm saying, no. I'm, I'm pretty in there, ain't I? <laughs> You understand what I'm saying? In, no mo in the moments, those small moments, you look at that as, hey, I'm just a team being a team. But you're not looking at it in as, this is spiritual warfare. There's an active enemy out here trying to get the most important part of me to compromise. He can't get this part of me. So he has to attack this part of me by way of suggestion, I'm going to suggest this thought to him. Just like he did with Eve. Did God say, don't eat of this tree? Surely he knows that if you eat of it, then you'll be just like God. Surely he knows this. I think you should eat of the tree. He didn't say nothing she ain't already know. But because his tone had controversy in it, she immediately went to God is trying to hold something back from me. How do you liken that? Your mama, your daddy come up to you, baby. I'm going to let you go to this party. But I just want to warn you. Oh, my God, mom, things aren't the way they were when you were younger. Oh, my God. I know what I'm doing. Hey, mom, I'm going to be all right. Just trust me. You go to the party. J-Bo there. J-Bo! Big J. Bo, captain of the football team, captain of the basketball team, uh, 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 number one in uh, 7A region, number one in the region. You feel what I'm saying? Everybody at the school love him. You know what I'm saying? He's the highlight reel of the basketball team, right? And J. Bo like you. Uh, give me a girl name. 
You know the one I always use. Keisha. J-Bo loved Keisha, boy. Keisha's the little girl that I described. Adopted at the age of seven. Molested by the, at the age of six. Parents had to be taken from them because they were drug addicts. This is a true story. I do advisement, so I see these things all the time. I'm in the public school system, so I see these things all the time. J-Bo, come up to Keisha. Well, I don't know why y'all do that. It's just, it's hilarious. You ain't even got no gum in your mouth. Breath stank, smell like doo-doo, right? And girls, y'all need to be, quit trying to be nice. Tell these brothers. I'm getting ready to put a gum machine out front because I be hearing the girls, fellas, come to me talk about, Pastor Ed, we got to do something about these young men and their hygiene. Do y'all talk about that in Lions Den? I've had about eight girls come up. Anyway. So j Bo comes up. Keisha's come, Keisha come up. She don't want to do nothing. She don't want to do nothing here. She's scared here. But here... You ain't talking about that. Her heart is. As she's talking to you, she has visions of when she was molested. She has visions of the, the, the suicidal thoughts and all of that, but it's blinded by the love, or not the love, but the acceptance void that she has here. I want to be liked. I want to know that I'm beautiful. And I, I'm willing to compromise and get it any way I can get it. So, if the, if the majority is doing this, then obviously this is what I'm supposed to be doing. That's immaturity. You know what that looks like to God? Hey, my toy. Got my toy? Mm, stupid. Mm. Mm, my baby. I got a baby. Ooh, want to play catch? Want to play catch, Jenja? Want to play catch, Jenja? Jenja, catch, catch, Jenja, catch, Jenja. Catch the baby. Oh! He got the baby. Jenja got the baby. Oh my God. Jenja. Oh my God, you don't want to play catch in that place. You're a 20-year-old man. Looking like that. 17-year-old kid. Looking like that. That's what that looks like. Why? Because this part of you is still like this. Could you imagine, Keisha, if the validation of acceptance she was seeking came from God and her relationship with Jesus Christ? She wouldn't even be in that position. Now, she done slept around with J-Bo. And J-Bo and Keisha got a baby on the way. Is it over for her? Nah. It ain't never over. As long as there's breath in your lungs, it ain't never over for you. You have an opportunity to fix it, to change it. Well, what do I do, Pastor Ant? You listen to what I'm saying. It's time to grow up. Pay just as much attention to this part of you as you do to this part of you. Man shall not live by bread alone. So if you want this part of you to grow, you got to start feeding it. What does it eat? What does it eat? <laughs> you know, on the back of uh, food, it usually has the nutrition facts. What do you think the nutrition facts come when you read the word? Peace, joy, confidence. Hebrews 10, 35 says, cast not away your confidence in the Lord, for at the end it shall be a great recompense of reward. That's when you put your confidence in him 
and not in the material things that you see. Carnality. Does that make sense? Clap one time if that makes sense. My wife's giving me that look. I'm almost done, I promise. I got five minutes. I'm going to stop in five minutes. Hey, y'all, I'm going to stop in five minutes. Online audience. Shout out to my online audience. I'm stopping in five minutes, all right? <sighs> promise I ain't, I, I never keep the time. Okay, let me stay in my message. Here's the plan. Submit yourself to God for him to do the work inside of you. <clears throat> A lot of times we think things are hard because it's like, <clears throat> I don't have the capacity to do that. It's okay. God is in you. He's the author and the finisher of your faith. All you have to do is like Philemon 1 and 6, I believe. It says, your faith becomes effectual when you acknowledge the good that is in you. Acknowledge God. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. Keisha could have acknowledged him right there in that moment before it even got to Jabo's parents' house in his bathroom or in his garage because he's a teenager. I mean, he doesn't have his own place. What, what were you expecting? I've heard all types of stories. Girls out by the, uh, 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 the back of the school, by the trash. Are you serious? I'm not saying that's anybody in here, but these are things that I hear all the time. I do this for a living. So I'm, my ears is in the street. I know what's going on. You hear me? In the back of a car. Devaluing young queens. And then the young men can easily go, well, shoot, man, I'm just as young as she is, you know. She devalued herself by letting me. That's true. But now what? Is it over for you? No. You know what hope is? Hope is something that's always being attacked because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So if you don't have hope, you'll feel like you're entrapped and that there is no way out for you which is why you see young people committing suicide, young people cutting themselves, young people addicted to opiates and drugs and all different types of things like that. How many of you have ever seen a 16-year-old alcoholic? It shouldn't be so many hands raised. You see a 16-year-old, he looked like he's 30. How many of you have ever seen that? Ain't no way. <laughs> what was the dude on the basketball team today? Sammy, we had this dude Played for the school, man. This dude looked like he was every bit of 30, man. I'm talking about every time a new coach or a new team came to the school, they would be like, hey, man, we need to check this kid's birth certificate, man. Ain't no way. He has a full goatee. There's no way you're going to tell me this kid is 16 years old, man. Tell me the truth, man. Constance's mama would always say, ooh, he looked like he had a hard life. How old are you, baby? 16. What, you got Benjamin Buttons? What's going on with you? Why you look so old and aged and wrinkles under your eyes and everything? You look like a 40-year-old man. That's what happens when you allow the things of this world to consume you and you begin to evolve and transform into the world instead of being transformed into who God created you to be. This world is created to eat you up and spit you out. Y'all better recognize that. There's an active enemy out here with three assignments. It's to steal, kill, and destroy. But he's after your hope. He's after your identity. Ultimately, he's after your destiny. Now, here's something I want to share with you because I don't think many young people know it. God is omnipresent, which means he's everywhere at all times. He's sovereign right? Omnipotent, which means he knows your thoughts, he knows your heart. Satan ain't that. Uh-uh. Nuh-uh. Mm -mm. 
Satan can't read your mind. He can suggest things to your mind, but he can't hear your thoughts. He can say things to you and suggest thoughts to you. He can only hear what comes out of your what? Which is why the Bible says, life and is in the power of the... So when that person comes up to you, or no, no, no. When you're on the phone with your partners or you're on the phone with your girlfriends and different things like that, girl, I want him so bad. The devil ain't know that until you said it. Well, when you come home, <clears throat> your parents are arguing. It's always an argument in the house. It's always something. Something's always missing. Mom's mad at dad. Dad lost his job. Uh, the lights are off. We've got candles out. Dad's trying to keep a good attitude about it. Mom is like, uh-uh, get somebody else to do it. You know what I'm saying? It's in those times where you have that pause moment and you could either say, man, y'all get on my nerves. I hate it here. Here's Satan. Hmm. I'll divide and conquer the relationship between the parents and the child. Why is the attack so heavy? Because you keep letting it come out your mouth. You see how that works? Clap one time if you see how that works. Watch what you allow to come out your mouth. People are listening. <laughs> the spirits are listening. The devil don't know except for what you say. So stop saying what you see and call those things to be not as though they were. Just because you close your door and you think your parents don't hear it, so it ain't about whether your parents hear it or not. As a matter of fact, if your parents heard it, when they go back in their room, boy, that's your daughter, boy, that's your son. Act just like you when you were 15. Act just like you when you were 12. It ain't about what we hear. Our job is to train you and get you up. We're going to love you regardless. Regardless. When it comes to your parents, it's like, I don't care what he do. What she said. You mine. And I don't care. Uh, yeah, what he did was wrong. He did this. He did that. He did this. But he's still mine, and y'all going to give him a fair chance. That's the position of a parent. Satan ain't your doggone parent. He don't care nothing about your feelings or what happened to you. His whole assignment is to kill you. Are you kidding me? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Ooh, my time is gone. I said, I'm going to stop. <sighs> Philippians 1 and 6. I am certain that God, who began the good work within you, will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. Make God a priority, guys. That's the message. You want to grow up? Make God the priority. Make him the priority. Add him in every detail of your life. Trust me, you're going to need it. How many seniors I got in here? Seniors, raise your hand. Wow. This isn't something that should bring fear to you. But when you leave the house, you find yourself in a position where there's no, super, there's no supervision, no real accountability. You have total access to be able to do whatever it is you want to do. You want to go to the club? Go to the club. Right? You want to have sex? Have sex. You're grown. You want to, you know, uh, smoke weed and drink and all that other stuff? Who's going to stop you? You finally made it to your grown. As long as you're up at your parents' house. Can't be doing that in your parents' house because then you're going to have a big problem and that's where all that stuff coming from. Man, I'm a grown man. You can't be telling me, but yeah, but you're a grown man in my house. Yeah, but. <laughs> So be in the house at 1230, but I'm 23. Be in the house at 1230, my door locks it. <laughs> my house door locks, right? 
<laughs> so stay where you're at. Right? This world is going to bring trial and tribulation. But if you read your word, like I said earlier in the beginning of the service, in this world you will have trials and tribulations. But be of good cheer. In other words, what he's saying is, you're going to have trials and tribulations. Those that love me suffer persecution. Those things are going to happen. But be of good cheer because as long as you're focused on me, everything's going to be all right. And that thing that was meant to break you is only going to make you stronger. I don't bring bad things upon you. However, when bad things come upon you, I'm going to walk with you with it, and it's going to strengthen you and make you stronger and make you more prepared because more things are coming. John Avery, how long have you been graduated up out of team ministry? Four years. Am I lying? We talk. But have we talked in depth? Have things that I said to you when you were younger that were going to happen, have they happened? Either you can take my word for it, take your parents' word for it, or the world will teach you. And they're not worried about you being cute. Oh, that's my baby, that's my baby. You're not the world's baby, you're your parents' baby. The world got billions of people to choose from. You're just a, a number to the world. Know that. Your purpose does not come from the outside in. It comes from the inside out. That's what makes you different. That's what makes you special. It's you accepting the call of God on your life and beginning to walk in it. Does that make sense? If you, if you learn something today, make some noise. Whew. I got so much more but, you know, but just, mm. okay. Because we did a study and students can only listen for about 30 minutes before they tap out and start fidgeting and stuff like that. So we're going to let y'all chill and we're going to let y'all eat, man. But I really need you guys to get this, man. It's time to grow up. It's time to grow up. What part am I talking about? Am I talking about this part? Because the only thing that requires this part to grow is food and time. Right? Am I talking about this part? No. Because this part grows with this part. Which is why you could be 20 years old here, but the girls tell you, you act like a child. That's because you got baby emotions. You got motions. You got motion. You got motion. But the emotions, eh. <laughs> I'm going to get you. Got you. Hide and seek. Are you serious? Ladies, if a 19-year-old came up to you sucking on a pacifier, would you entertain the conversation? Some of you would, I feel like. I feel like, you know, little J-Bo got on one of these chains. One of these, he come up in a... Where is that? What's up, little mama? What's up, little mama? What's going on with you? You know what I mean? I'm just out here having it. You know what I mean? I'm just out here having it, a little motion. It ain't just a little light work. Oh, you, oh, oh, you, like, oh, you like my J? I mean, it's a little light work. I left the balance at home, you see it. By for, by, oh, my mama! Oh, my mama, boy! By, oh, my mama, boy! By, oh, my stepdaddy. Grow up. If you're out there today and you haven't accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, if you're watching online or if you're in the room today and you haven't accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, I'm going to give you some meat. Hopefully you can swallow it. People don't go to hell for sin. They go to hell for rejecting Jesus. So one of the biggest decisions that you can make as a human being is to accept Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. After that, the biggest decision that you can commit to daily is to commit to a life of being transformed by the renewing of your mind. I'm not saying you're going to get it right every day. I'm just saying make sure that you understand tomorrow's coming and God need to be with me there too. 
Keep him in the picture. Acknowledge him. Be intimate with him. Know him like I know my wife. Know him like I know my children. Know him. Amen? So if you're out there today and you haven't accepted Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, I want you to just simply repeat after me if you're willing to accept him today. Say, Father God, I admit that I am a sinner. Come into my life. Be my God. Be my Lord. I surrender my body, my soul, and my spirit to you. Have your perfect way in my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you just said that prayer, then we want to make a round of applause for you. We have a gift for you. If you text I'm saved to 51555, we have a digital download that we'd like to put into your hands that'll talk to you about discipleship and show you how to uh, uh, walk this life out because you're definitely going to need to be walked with. You're definitely going to require some uh, discipleship. Man, I love you guys so much, and I actually missed you guys, man. Uh, everybody good? Okay, they got a TikTok. Put me in the picture. I want, yeah, Constance, I want to be in it. What y'all finna post that on, bro? What that, what that TikTok? That TikTok? Instagram? Huh? What? The crowd. What you talking about? Whoa! Anyways, um, y'all good? How your basketball season went? You ain't play? He said what? Got you. All right. Man, listen, I love you guys. I'm about to pray for you guys, and I think somebody's coming up after me. Huh? What? Who? What's here? Behind the stage? Okay. Janae, you come on out. Well, yeah, Janae. There she go. Hey, listen. Father, I pray a hedge of protection over each and every young person in this building. I declare that the house that they go home to is filled with peace, filled with joy, that they have an awesome day, enjoy watching the Super Bowl, enjoy eating wings and having a good time with loved ones, with no drama, no arguments, no none of that. And even if drama and arguments come, Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, that they're mindful of you and that their response will be driven from you and not from their emotions. I declare it so. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Love you guys. Y'all make some noise for After Hours one more time. <laughs>